there is a direct link between our endurance capacity that we measure as maximal oxygen uptake and the risk for inactivity related diseases and a shorter life. This link is stronger than anything that you can measure at your general physician's uh, visits. And that is why we put so much emphasis on your cardiovascular capacity linked to your health. We do measure maximal oxygen uptake for most athletes and a lot of patients. And the way we measure it is putting on a mask where we can measure the oxygen that goes into your body and out of your body. It's not very good looking, uh, although the female on the picture, she doesn't mind too much. She is a six-time Olympic champion, so uh, she can stand not looking so good for a few minutes. When we measure, your maximal oxygen uptake. We regularly take you to the lab, crank up the speed of the treadmill so much and the inclination of the treadmill so much that you feel that you're falling off. Of course you don't, but you're going to hate us until we stop the test. <laughs> and what is measured is the amount of oxygen that goes into your body that gives you your endurance level and your aerobic power measured as milliliter taken up of oxygen per kilo and minute. And this level, it changes. It changes by 10% per decade after the age of 20 in the average population. But the average population today is not very healthy. So it's not a smart place to stay. And I'll promise you today that if you can spend 30 minutes two times per week exercising, not any exercise, but the most effective exercise that we know of for your cardiovascular system, the four by four minute intervals, I promise you, you can stay 20 years of age in cardiovascular terms until you're at least 70. The values that we measure is 10 to 15 for heart failure patients. They are really bad patients at the hospital. It is 20 to 35 for uh, heart attack patients. It is 50 for an average 20 year old. It is 90 for the very best athletes. And a lot of our research is derived from working, from, uh, working with some of the best athletes around the world. Uh, also from some of the best football clubs, that is at least a lot of fun, working with Real Madrid and Barcelona and Olympiacos and Celtic, it's a lot of fun. To exercise your heart and to change your heart is some work. 30 minutes, two times per, per week. But it is commonly carried out by sports people and it is standard procedure at our hospital uh, for people with heart failure and with heart attacks or who have had heart attacks and needs rehabilitation. The limiting factor for your exercise capacity is the size of your heart. And to change it, you need to run as much blood through your heart as possible. To do that, you need to have a relatively high intensity. It is an intensity that is close to your maximal oxygen uptake, meaning it is 10 to 20 beats below your maximal heart rate. It is an intensity that is pretty easy to guide if you walk uphill, as is our advice to the common people. The intensity is where you are breathing heavily, but have no other discomfort, like they are doing in this picture. Breathing heavily, no discomfort. You need this high intensity, and it is an intensity that you can't sustain more than six to nine minutes. 
On the other hand, the lower part or the lowest uh, time you can exercise is around two minutes. Because it's easy to understand, you need to get five kilos of blood into circulation to fill your heart. And only when you fill your heart completely, you get the adaptation that is a bigger heart. A lot of people also think that uh, the lungs are a limiting factor, but it is not. You need to have a severe lung disease before the lungs are a limiting factor. And your muscle can produce two to three times more energy if it only got enough oxygen-rich blood. When you're covering out the four-minute intervals, you need breaks in between. So several intervals, four minutes of length, with an active break is necessary. The active break is to remove lactate. The intensity is so high that you build up lactate even if you don't feel it during the exercise. We know that if you don't remove it, then it will um, build up uh, during the session and will stop you during the, the intervals. If you're carrying out this type of training, you improve half a percent each time you exercise. And we find the same training responses for the top sport people as we find for the patient. And there is no difference in training response between one, a person that is 20 years of age and a person that is 70 or 80 years of age. So there's no excuse not taking care of your own body. But it is also, capacity is also easily lost. Three weeks of bed rest equals 30 years of aging. And that is nothing that you get back easily. It's really hard work to be able to get back. And most people, having had a bed, bed rest for injury or, or, or disease reasons, they never get back. They simply die earlier than their healthy counterparts. But in terms of inactivity-related diseases, most of all cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, but also different other diseases, uh, it is possible to get back into a good cardiovascular situation. You have a choice. You can choose to flow with average in the population, or you can choose to stay young in terms of cardiovascular health. This guy on the picture, he's 85 years of age, has just decided that he wanted to stay 20. We've tested him for 35 years. He did have the same values as an average 20-year-old 35 years back, and he still has. And of course, relatively, compared to his healthy counterparts, he becomes fitter and fitter. And a few years back, he did win the most prestigious cross-country race in Norway. For a football player, if we do the same thing and exercise them for like 20 sessions over a period of time, a football player are able to run 1.7 kilometers more during a football match and have twice as many sprints, and that is smart, of course. We have compared that in our research with having one more player on the field for a team. That is, of course, smart. You shouldn't have played too much football to grasp that. The four by four minute intervals, we can use, and we've developed an app where you can use it. You don't need expensive equipment and a lab to measure your maximal oxygen uptake and your biological age. And your biological age is then a comparison to where you are compared to the average in the population. This app is free and available for you. And two times per week, you needn't like this four by four minute intervals. I don't like it too much. I used to be a sprinter, and I'm not made for endurance sports. I still do it, 
because I want to stay away from cardiovascular disease and the problems uh, that leads to, and I want to live the same life as a 70-year-old as I did as a 20-year-old, because that is directly my capacity. So the four by four minute intervals is today as close as we can come to the fountain of youth. Thank you. Thank you.